Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Meat Made, and today I am so excited because I am going to show you five different methods to be able to remove your supports easily. So let's not waste any more time and get into this video. So if you're new to 3D printing or you've been 3D printing for a while, it doesn't take long to realize how much of a pain it is to remove supports. And in this video, I am going to show you some ways that I remove them easily. So I have 3D printed a few projects here and they're all supported. Some of them have tree supports and some of them have our standard supports. And I am going to show you different methods. And I think this is the time I need to give you that disclaimer because you're going to find out that some of these methods are going to work perfect for you for a specific project. And then you're going to realize for another type of project, it just, it doesn't get the supports off very well. So I, what I want to say is not every single one of these methods are created equally. And I would even say not all of them are created equally per project. Because on some projects, you might find out one of these methods work really easy and it works so great for you. And you do the same thing on another project and it's just, it's a pain. And that's why I'm giving you five different methods. Because if you know all of these, these are just going to add to your arsenal to where when you're needing to remove supports, you know what to use and what's going to work best for you. Now, this is the most important part of this video, the safety aspects of removing your 3D printed supports. Now, if you have been printing for a while or just a little bit and you've removed some supports, you might have already realized that removing supports sometimes, depending on the size of the supports and stuff, I mean, they can be razor sharp once you start breaking them. And when you're done, your hands have all these tiny little cuts or big cuts on your hands. And it looks like you were trying to do like a dental inspection with a badger or something. I mean, I've walked away sometimes when I first got started into 3D printing and I had just blood dripping down my hands and I had little cuts everywhere. And I was like, there has got to be a better way. And lucky for you, all of my trials and errors, I finally found something that works really good when it comes to removing supports to be able to protect your hands. And that is cut resistant gloves. So these gloves are actually cut resistant. So it's not easy for even a knife to cut through some of this. I'm not saying that cut resistant gloves, you can just take a razor blade to your palm and it will be fine. It's resistant to it. I mean, it's not cut proof. So I will say that right in the beginning. So, but this will definitely protect you from your supports, cutting your hands to pieces. I strongly recommend getting a pair of these and I am going to put a link to the description of all of the things that I'm using down below for you. And these are pretty affordable too. And the nice thing about these is these are fitted to me and a size medium fits me perfect and they come in all different sizes. And you still have the dexterity to be able to pick up things and get in there and even hold tools. And that's why I like these so much because there are some really cheap cut resistant gloves out there that don't have this coating. And it's the coating that I have found over the years that it really does help to be able to use these. So the first thing, obviously, you need to protect your hands. Now let's talk about the second thing that we need to worry about. Now the second thing you need is a pair of safety glasses. And honestly, these are the most important things you really need because this is going to save your eyes. I can't tell you how many times I have removed supports and then suddenly snap and then just a piece goes right into my eye. But luckily I wear safety glasses and it just dings right off of it. These are fairly inexpensive. You can get safety glasses just about anywhere, but they are worth their weight in gold. I can't, I honestly, I cannot tell you how many times I could have been hit in the eye when removing supports because you'll have little tiny pieces that will just like break off or snap and they just go flying. So be sure to protect your eyes. I can't, I cannot tell you how important this is. Now the other thing is a respirator. A respirator is something you're going to need for a couple of these methods. Not all of these methods, but when we're using heat and we're trying to melt some of the plastic, 
we want to make sure we've got a respirator on because we do not want to breathe in those plastic fumes that are just going into the air. And you might be thinking of like, oh, just a little bit here and there isn't going to hurt me. But it's not about the one-time exposure. It's about the exposure of over and over. And over time, that can damage your lungs. So be sure, please, save your lungs and just get a respirator. And you want to make sure that you're using the right type of respirator. You don't want something like an N95 mask. You want something that's going to give a complete seal around your face and be able to filter out any fumes that might be coming into the air. So be sure to use a respirator if you're going to use a couple of these methods in this video. So these are the main things. You want some gloves to protect your hands, safety glasses to protect your eyes, and a respirator to protect your lungs. So all of this safety is out of the way. Let's go ahead and get started with this first method. All right, so the tools that I use for the prying method is first, I just have a wide standard screwdriver. That's it. This is one of my main tools right here. Then I have these little picks that I picked up. I think I got some of these on Harbor Freight. I think I got some on Amazon. Now, I really like the ones that have like the points to them because they can kind of get in these areas that you're going to see to be able to help pry away some of this stuff. But they also have like little, you know, wedges as well on the other side. But these are really nice because they're just stainless steel. But a screwdriver for this method is one of my favorites. And you can get just different size screwdrivers, as well as if you wanted to get like an awl or a pick, that works just as well too. Just as long as it's something to where you can get in there and pry. And you're going to see in just a second. So for this method, I'm going to show you on a tree support 3D print and a standard 3D print. And this model is Louie from DuckTales that was modeled by Pixel and Plastic. And I'll go ahead and I'll be putting links down in the descriptions for you so you can get these models too if you want to. So for this method, I think it's really important to understand when is it best to use it. And it's really for when you have a 3D print that has a little bit of a lip. So you can kind of see this gap right here where the support wasn't fully touching the 3D model. That right there is exactly what we're looking for. And that is only because we want to be able to get the screwdriver in there to be able to pry it. Now, this is the other thing that I'm going to say. When you're prying this, like I'm going to push this in here and I'm basically just going to pry it off of the print. And it's going to come off pretty easy. But I will say, when you're doing this, make sure you're very careful with it because you could gouge your 3D print or if you put enough leverage towards it, it will break your 3D print. Now this is just a really big head and there's nothing really to break off of it. But you have to be careful because if this was a smaller print, I could easily break something off when I do this. So for this one, I'm gonna show you just how easy this method is. So I'm gonna find like a nice sized gap and I'm going to get my screwdriver in there. And we're gonna just go in there and I'm gonna just slide it and that is it. So now that I've got it in there and it went pretty far, I'm just going to pry it off. And, I'm, and all I'm doing is scooting my screwdriver in the more it releases. That way I can just keep prying it off. And there we go. So now we can see that I got that much off. So the next part, you're gonna wanna get yourself some snips. And personally, I would recommend if you have a pair like this, get rid of them and you want to buy a better pair of snips. You use snips so much, it is well worth the investment to be able to buy a really solid pair with a good handle that isn't going to break. I can't tell you how many of these I've gotten with 3D printers that they end up just breaking and then like the, this little like silicone handle just like slides off. And if yours is like that, invest the money because these are worth their weight in gold. And all I'm going to do, once I've got it like this, I'm going to just snip off any of the excess. And there we go. So now we have that. And you can even use your snips to pull off any ex excess that you see there, like this. Like I can just grab that and pull those off. And for this next spot, I'm gonna use a smaller one 
because I don't want to torque on the neck with this screwdriver. So I'm just going to push in and then I'm just going to pry it off. And it's literally just that easy. Just using prying and then it'll come right off for you. And then you can see that this is actually looking pretty clean. And another great thing that you can have is a set of small pliers. Now this set that I have, it has this one that is really flat. It's a very flat faced. And these are excellent for removing little bits of supports that still are stuck on your 3D print. So I can easily just grab it and then just pinch that off like this. And then there we go. And, and I can just keep doing that and get really close to my 3D print to be able to remove any excess 3D printed supports. And I can get a very nice clean cut. So that is how I remove my supports using the prying method. So I went ahead and turned off my light just so you can see how clean I was able to remove that support. And honestly, you saw how fast that was. Like it took no time whatsoever. And that is the nice thing about this. When you find a support that has those gaps that you can go in there and just pry it and keep moving your way towards the center, they come off so easy. So the prying method is a really good method to use. So now that I've shown you how to do it on standard supports, let's look at tree supports. So when it comes to tree supports, it's really no different. But like I said before, you want to be able to find supports to where you can easily get in there and just pry them out. Now, if this was like, say, a big base and I had a huge amount of supports here, when they're tree supports, this prying method doesn't work too well. It really works great when there's just a flat line of tree supports. So you can see how these flat line of tree supports are just right along the edge here. So all I have to do is just literally go in here and just pry it off like that. And I mean, these supports came off beautifully. And here we go again, that, like, that last one did it. So I could just kind of go in here like this, twist, and there we go and then I've gotten them off. And obviously there are some smaller supports that if you can just grab and break off, break them off. That's the beautiful thing about tree supports. Now, depending if you're using something that has a brim or a skirt, you might get some of this edging right here that you just kind of get off. There's two ways of doing it. First, you could be using a deburring tool. And I love these because they're so easy to use to remove those skirts and brims. Now, all you do is literally you just drag it across and you can see how it just cuts it off right there and it just gives you a nice clean edge. And the other way, if you don't have a deburring tool, is just using an X-Acto knife and you can go through here and just slice that off. And either way, you can get a really nice edge, whether you cut it off or you use a deburring tool. So now, moment of truth. Look at that. Fits beautifully and you don't even see any support marks on these edges, and that is great. And one other thing that I should mention, I did this one in Cura, and I did this one in Bamboo Studio. So I gave two different slicers to print these two different pieces. And you can see how the results are just wonderful. So you can see our final results. We don't even see any support marks on the corners right there. This model is just made beautifully. It fits. I can't believe how nice this fits. And being able to have those supports not leave any residue or any other extra pieces of filament on there really does help. And on the back, it really doesn't look bad at all, especially that it's all white and it's kind of hard to see if there's any little rough spots on it. All right, so this method I call the twist and pull method. And I'll tell you where this really shines is when you're dealing with just regular supports, like standard supports. And what you want to first do is really look in there. I don't know if this is too bright. Let me darken it up. There we go. Now you can kind of see the lines of the support, like the back and forth, the zigzag pattern in that. That is really what we're looking at. And this method is really good to use when the supports are coming off of the build plate because now it's flat and I can easily see where all of those supports are. So this is what I do. I will either take a nice 
set of needle nose pliers or I will take another type of pliers to where I can get in there. So we're basically going to push this through the supports and then we're going to twist to be able to break it off of the 3D print. Now the one thing before we get started, you want to first look, is there any supports that you can easily remove without even having to deal with anything? And right here, I've got this solo support right here. So I can easily just pop. There we go. I just pulled that off, no problem. So there we go. Let's get our light back on. And I am going to push in here. And now I'm going to clamp down, squeeze, and then I'm going to twist. And you can see how I got some of our supports already off. And all I'm going to do is just keep repeating this. I'm just going to keep twisting. Now this is the part where you definitely, if you don't already, have your safety glasses on because pieces will go flying. And if you can get it right, you can just continually keep twisting this around. And how I'm just removing these supports off one by one. And all I'm doing is twisting. I'm squeezing and I'm twisting. Just getting all of those supports off. And there we go. So you may experience some of your roof supports will be still on there. And we'll get to that in a minute. But the first thing, you just want to get all of these supports off. So I'm just going to keep twisting. And all I'm doing is pushing that in there and then just twisting it off. And there we go. So now I can just grab with my needle nose pliers any of that roof material and just start pulling it off. Then once I have all of the roof material off that I can get with my needle nose pliers, I'll go ahead and I'll switch to something else. So now I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to just go along the bottom here and just start snipping off any of that extra support that was left over. And if you grab it the right way, you'll be able to just pull quite a bit off at a time and just kind of go with the grain. You don't want to go against it. So if you're going to be pulling pieces off, kind of pull it along the grain of the 3D print, of the roof material. Alright, so there we go. We've got a really nice clean edge right there. All of the support material has come off, but I do have a little bit of like edges right here where the brim material is still attached. So to clean off these edges, we can either use our X-Acto knife or deburring tool like we used in the previous method. So you can see how nice this deburring tool will just get rid of these edges. And I'm just dragging it along the edge of the 3D print. And this is also where it's super important to be able to have your gloves because this edge is very sharp and it can easily cut into you. But because I have my gloves, I'm perfectly safe. So we've gotten the head and the bill of Louis. Now we've got the bottom of Louis. I have the legs right here that didn't require supports and they just fit in right there. So you can see there's the legs. But I can't wait to see this thing fully put together. It's going to be great. So in this method, I am going to be using a soldering iron. And this one that I have is just a really, it's a cheap soldering iron that I got on Amazon. Because I get plastic all over it and I didn't want to put the money into something that I might end up destroying. And I've had this for a good while. So a basic cheap soldering iron will definitely do the trick for you and last Hopefully, as long as this one has for me. And the next thing, when you're melting plastic like this, you want to wear your respirator. This is crucial. 
And I'm going to show you this example using a little D&D mini that I printed with tree supports. And you can see that this guy is very intricate and he has a lot of details on there. And if I go in here and start ripping off supports, I have a high likelihood of breaking something. So I got to make sure that I am not going to destroy any of the very intricate things. And really what we're going to be doing with this is I am going to use this to be able to melt off some of these trunks and that is going to be able to give me better access to be able to break off some of these supports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my respirator on and go ahead and go through this process and I'll just talk over the video. So the most important thing is, is first I want to, I go after the base and I go and look at the big trunks and seeing how I can remove all of these different supports off the bottom. Then I work my way up and I usually like to put the soldering iron into the tree support. That way it starts to heat up the inside of that tree support and then it becomes a lot more pliable and then I can actually just pull it out. And for this method, I mostly use the soldering iron. But other times I would go ahead and I would use the snippers to start snipping away different pieces and parts with the soldering iron. So you don't have to just use the soldering iron. You can definitely use snips or cutters or anything like that. The big thing here is you can use the soldering iron to soften up your supports to be able to pull them off easily, especially in those really intricate areas. My one word of caution for this entire thing is just be careful. You do not want to hit your 3D print with the soldering iron or you don't want to hold it there too long. If you hold it somewhere too long, the entire print will start to heat up and then you can see some sagging or some drooping. So just use this with caution and there's certain times that this will work great and other times it might not work so great. So for this method, we're going to be using a heat gun. This is the one that I have. It's a Wagner and it's really nice. I like it just because when I'm done, it actually sits like this. That way I don't accidentally like lay it on something and melt my table or catch my table on fire. So this has got two modes, a low and a high. And that's what I really like about this because for what I'm going to do, I will never put it on high. And the big thing I will say about using a heat gun, use it sparingly and use it in very little amounts because this is putting out a lot of heat. And if you're nervous about using a heat gun, you can honestly use a hairdryer too. It, it doesn't matter. We're basically just blowing heat on our 3D print. And what I'm using here is I have got this Stormtrooper helmet and it's actually like a flower pot that I'm probably going to be turning into a candy dish but it's like this destroyed helmet. So what I'm going to do is I am going to heat up the inside here. And the big thing is I'm not going to overdo it because these walls are not super thick because if I overdo it too much, then this is going to start like losing its integrity and it could start like, you know, falling in on itself. But I have a lot of supports in here that I need to get rid of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply just a little bit of heat in here to soften up these supports so I can grab them and pull them out easily. Now the other thing that I'm going to be using is I am going to be using these like bent needle nose pliers. I really like these because I can, you can see, I'm going to be able to get in there really easily and just snip them off. And I'm also going to be using my big needle nose pliers and I am going to just be grabbing them and kind of twisting it off. Because when I start heating this up, the supports are should be just one wall. And if you're printing supports that are more than one wall, this method might not work out too well for you. But I'm printing supports with one wall, so me heating these up, they're gonna heat up pretty quick and it's not going to take a lot from the heat gun. The other thing I should mention, we are heating up plastic, so Definitely get your respirator on for this as well. So first I'm going to do it on the back here just so you can get an idea of how fast I'm actually going to be doing this. And that's it. So then I can pull these off 
pretty easily now. Like, I'm pulling these off with my hands. That Those came off pretty easily. And I can just take my pliers if there's a little piece left, and there we go. And now I have other ones right here. And if you notice, I did not stop moving. Do not just hold your heat gun in one spot because it doesn't take long for it to just start melting. And that is the last thing you want. And there we go. And now you can see these supports are literally just peeling off. There's no snapping, no breaking. And that's the beautiful thing about this is they will come off just like that. And you can see how easy it is once you heat them up that you can get these off. And I mean, they come off so easily. But you just basically want to kind of pinch and roll them. And there we go. So these go all the way underneath here, so I'm just going to apply heat to it now. And there we go. So I can probably just get my needle nose in there and start peeling it off. Just like that. And there we go. So you can see how this peels off and it's kind of like, it gets really soft. Like just to show you while it's pliable, like you can really bend this and just twist it off no problem. And you can see there's really nothing left because it took the roof interface off with it as well. Now when you're dealing with more taller tree supports, it's a lot easier and you can see this. So let's just go ahead and get these and let me show you that. Now I can just take it and you can see how these just pry off like nothing. Like that is, that is what I love about this method. Okay, so now we're going to start attacking the inside of this. And this is probably going to be the more challenging part just because it's a little harder to grab the supports. But we're going to just kind of do the same thing we were doing. Just applying a little bit of heat at a time. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in here and see if I can just pull these out. And you can see that it is, the, the helmet is just a tiny bit pliable, so you've gotta be careful. You do not want this to like, just start caving in. So for this, and notice my gloves, like the heat doesn't bother me with my gloves on. So I'm just going in here and I'm literally just kind of peeling this support system out of there. And it's just that easy, honestly. And there we go. And now I'll just try to pull it from the bottom here. And there we go. Got it off. And I'll rip this one out. Oh, nope. Came out. So now I've got it all out right there. Now, all I've got to do is get the supports that are in here. But you can imagine how hard some of these would be to get out if you were just using pliers. Now, for these right here, since my fingers won't really reach in there, I'm going to be using these pliers that I talked about earlier to grab them. So, let's go ahead, heat this up. Alright, got it warmed up, 
Now just gotta grab these supports. So the, the pliers broke the bottom free and all I had to do was just go in there and kind of grab the rest of it and pull. And there we go. So the last piece to get is just this piece right here. So I'll heat that up and pull it right out. And this area is just a little bit tricky so I've got to kind of twist it. All of those supports. And there you go. So you can see all I got to do is twist that. And then I've got a little piece that's sticking still. And what you can do is you can take your snips. And if it ever, if it doesn't release, you can honestly just take your snips and just cut it right out. Then I can just grab it and pull it right out. We'll just get any extra. And there's just one more support in there. And you can see we got it all cleaned out and it was fairly easy with just using a little bit of heat. And just remember, just use your heat very sparingly because you can melt this stuff very easily. And that's why I chose this model to show you because of how thin it really is. Because I mean, this is super thin. But there we go. Now with this method, this works really well with tree supports. Now for this method, I've got two different models. I have got this one. This is a little mini right here that you can see. And this has a lot of intricate details right here. And I also have this hoodie. And this will complete our DuckTales model, Louie. So before I get the hot water, an important thing that I think is worth mentioning is if you have tree supports and it looks like that they can just break right off, it's worth just breaking them off because I knew that this was going to come off really easy. So get those out of the way because you don't need all of these little tiny supports everywhere if they'll just come off really easily. So now all I've got to do is deal with this. And I over supported this because if you actually saw my video where I actually supported this guy, I put a lot of supports here and they're like, I can't get any clearance right here to do any of the other methods that I use. So I'm going to use hot water and the same thing for this. Now what I have is just like a little like Tupperware bin and I'm going to go get some really hot water and fill this up. So I've got some really hot water and if you notice I'm not wearing my cut resistant gloves because for this method you're not going to get any shards breaking off and that's what I love about this method. So the first thing I'm going to just do it and I'll show you. So I'm just going to set this in here for maybe about 30 seconds. Okay, so now that some time has passed, I'm just going to basically go in here and I'm going to start to try to grab some supports and just break them away. And they're going to start bending. And that's the nice thing about this is you're not going to really have to deal with any kind of big breakage or anything like that. So you can see that they actually start to peel off. And then all I got to do is once it does that, I'm going to put it back in the water for just a little bit longer just so that those supports can really warm up. And this water is really hot too. And that's the key. You want to have really hot water. So now that that's kind of been in there, I can probably just start peeling this off and you can see how it's really just coming off. And there we go. So there. So it came off really nice and easily with no pliers, no nothing. Like, I mean, it just, I used heat and I got just a little bit of support material right there and that's it. And I guess the important thing is, is like, it's, it's soft. Like the supports get soft. And if they're not soft, that means you haven't got either hot enough water or you haven't let it set in the hot water for long enough. So there we go. Now I've got all of that off and there's no support material on here. It all came off pretty good. And considering this entire model like started just right here, I mean, that is pretty clean for a 3D print with it being supported completely by supports. So the next thing we have is our little skeleton and I will do the exact same thing and I will just kind of keep him underwater. 
So another important thing that's worth mentioning is you have to be careful when you're dealing with delicate things like this because I could easily start bending things or easily break things off. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using snips in the middle of this process because I want to break some of these little supports off and I want to make sure that I'm not going to be pulling too much on the actual model. Also, it's worth mentioning if your model isn't completely sealed, like let's say that your layer adhesion isn't very good, you could get water inside your 3D print and it's really hard to get out. It will over time, but you'll hear water swashing around in there when it comes to your infill. So just make sure that you've got some really good adhesion and there's no big holes that could possibly get inside your 3D print. So it's been in there for just a minute. So now you can already see like this is like it comes off just like that. And I can peel like I'm peeling it apart. Then I can come in here and I can just kind of cut some of these big supports. So I just want to cut them. That way I can just get it back in the water because it starts to cool down pretty quickly. And while I'm in there, I'm just kind of pushing on some of these supports and they're already just coming off like super easily. So all I'm doing is just kind of like manipulating some of this and you can see some of these supports like look at that. I mean, that's a beautiful clean print right there. So I'll just keep keep it in there for another minute. And I could even just bring it out and just kind of get another one of these supports kind of cut off right here. And it just peels. And this is what I love about it because it's bending. It's not actually breaking. It's just bending. But you just want to be careful about some of these supports because you don't want to break the model. So keeping some of these smaller 3D prints with that are very intricate, soaking them in hot water can really help. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to still manipulate it while it's still in the hot water. Because I'm just trying to get some of these supports off of here. And right there, the elbow just came off. And I mean, look how clean that is. Now I just got to worry about some of these on the back right here. And there we go. Even this crack where the spine is and the shield, I mean, it's coming off beautifully. And there we go. So look at this. I mean, honestly. For people that say that it's hard to print 3D minis, like because of the supports and removing them, something like this is one of your best options because you saw how easy this is. Now, I do have a little bit of support right here, but I mean, we're talking a minimal amount that I can just kind of take out with, with uh, my snips. And right here, we got just a little piece and that came right out. So there we go. So hot water is such a great option for certain scenarios because I think when it comes to these really delicate prints and you've got all of these different supports, I mean, it works great. And I think it works even better than like when we're dealing with bigger things. But I just wanted to show you it can work with big things, but it works great with these little like tiny minis or any, any kind of intricate 3D print. So the next time you're trying to print something this intricate and you're worried about removing the supports, I mean, hot water. I just love this method and it's just an easy way to remove supports without, honestly, I, nothing that you have to worry about because the supports you saw, they don't like fly off and like well, you'll get them in your eye or anything like that. You might splash water in your eye, but you don't have to worry about that. And I'm not wearing any gloves. I mean, it's probably one of the most safest ways to do this. But the key is, remember, hot water. I mean, it has to be really hot. Like halfway through this, I should have gotten more hot water because it started to cool down really quickly. But you can see the results. 
So those are all of the different methods that I use to be able to remove my 3D printed supports. And I think it's just kind of important for me to reiterate, not all of these are created equal per project. You're going to find out that some of these methods are going to be fantastic for maybe some more intricate things, and other ones are going to work great for just one giant support. And I also think it's important that you just you understand that on one 3D print that might have a lot of different supports, you might be using all of these methods, or you might be only using one or two of these methods. Mix them, blend them together, and that way you're going to get the best results and it's going to be easier for you to be able to remove these supports because it's inevitable. We're all having to print stuff that has supports because not all models are just beautiful and support free. Now this has just been one aspect of our supports. There's also the other side, and that is our settings in our slicers. And if you want more help in understanding your slicer when it comes to supports, I've actually created two different series, one for Kira and one for Bamboo Studio. And you can check them out right here. Other than that, I wish you a great day and I'll see you in these videos over here.